In this video, we're going to show you how to make this inexpensive yet incredibly sturdy drawer system that'll fit in the back of virtually any vehicle. We'll show you all the details of measuring, cutting, assembly, even applying a finish. Even if you have no woodworking experience and just a limited amount of tools, after watching this video, you'll have all the skills necessary to build your own. To build it, we used basic tools that most people have laying around and readily available materials and hardware. In the video description below, we provide a complete list of materials, measurements, and quick links to the chapters in the video. We're going to start by taking some simple measurements. Now this is our Toyota FJ Cruiser. We're building our drawers for it, but we're also going to give you all the dimensions for building one for a 5th gen 4Runner. You can easily do the math and make this fit any vehicle. To make it easy to put in and take out and simple to build, we're going to secure it to the floor using the factory tie downs. But first, allow us to introduce ourselves. This is Wanderlust Overland. Overland. Get the Let me see it. No, get your own. I want to see No, get your own! We're going to start with the measurement in between these two rear tie downs. And that is 33 inches. Now for the front to back, in our FJ we have this little step down right here so we can't put the drawers up on it. We're going to start at the base of that step down and go back to the sill plate and that is 27 inches. Now we also want to make sure that our rear seats will fold up with the drawers in here. So we're going to measure up from the what's going to be the rearmost of those drawers, measure up, and we have plenty of clearance with these back seats. That's a good thing. This is the wood we're building it out of. For strength and stability, premium plywood. And to keep it light, mostly half inch uh, for the drawer bottoms and the case top, we're using three quarter inch. The drawer slides are just off the shelf, inexpensive side mount, full extension units. Uh, they have a 100 pound rating and that should be plenty for what we're going to be putting in our drawers. And the latches too are just off the shelf, uh, readily available, fairly inexpensive units. Now instead of using fancy, difficult to make joints to hold our panels together, we're using a great quality glue, wood screws, and some reinforcement brackets where we really need some strength. In the video description below, you'll find a complete list of all the parts we used, their quantities, and where we bought them. Now we would love to use our table saw to cut all these panels out to size, but we realize that not everybody out there has one. Instead, we're just using a basic skill saw. Or you could use a jigsaw if that's what you have. Now to get that super strong glue joint, we have to make certain that our edges make full contact the entire length of that joint. To get that perfectly straight cut, we're going to set up a rip fence using a straight edge, or you could also use the factory cut on the pieces of plywood you have. Now to set up the fence, we're going to first take a measurement from this side of our saw blade to this side or this edge of our saw's base. And that is going to be the distance that our fence needs to be from the cut line that we draw. Measure twice, cut once. Better yet, measure three times. Now we'll make that mark for our fence, which ours was an inch and an eighth, but it varies from saw to saw. Now before we commit to making this full cut, we're just going to go in just a tiny bit with the saw to make sure that this distance between our cut line and the fence is right on. Mark, where's your safety glasses? If you want to keep all your fingers, never under any circumstances take your eyes off the blade when it's running. This will ensure you'll know where your hands are at all times. 
Now this is a great example of why you want to make that cut on the waist side of your layout line. Depending on what type of saw blade you're using, this cut can be up to 3 16 of an inch wide. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but believe me, that is going to make a huge difference in how square your case is going to be and how well the drawers are going to fit. If the blade you're using is giving a frayed cut, put down a little masking tape first. That should stop a lot of that tear out. The measured dimensions of all these panels for both the FJ Cruiser and the 5th Gen 4Runner are listed down in the video description. We're going to start by putting the case together. To begin, we have to find out exactly where these uh, sliders are going to mount on the case sides in that center divider and drill those holes for it. We're going to take this apart. It comes in two halves. Um, they all have some sort of little latch or mechanism to release it. Yep. And there you go. Now this part with the ball bearings on it is going to go on the sides and that divider. And of course this other half goes on the sides of our drawers. We're going to mark for the center of this slider four inches down from the top of all three panels, the two sides in the center divider. Then we'll mark a half an inch from the front of each of these panels. That is going to be where the slider will begin. Then we'll take a slider and have the front, the part that comes out, and lay it on that line and then look through all the bolt holes in the slider and you'll see that center line and get that right in the middle of all these holes and that is where we're going to put our bolts. Two in the back, two in the front, and two in the middle. Now we have to drill those holes with a 3 16 drill bit. <laughs> to bolt the sliders to the center divider, we're using bolts like this. This is a 10 24 by 3 quarters of an inch with a rounded head. The 10 is the diameter of the bolt, the 24 is the amount of threads on it, and the length is measured from the bottom edge of this bolt head to the very bottom. To bolt the sliders on the two sides, we're using this type of bolt. It has a cone-shaped head, or a wedge-shaped head, however you want to look at it. It's a 10-24 by 5 8 and from here to here, it's 5 8 this cone-shaped head for the sliders on the sides is going to be sunk into the sides uh, at or just below the surface like you see here. To do that, we have to make a slight indentation into the panel to accept that head by either using one of these, this is a countersink bit, or you can use a regular drill bit like this that's basically the same size as the head of that bolt. Now when you're using a drill bit, be very, very careful because this may have a tendency to get away from you and drill down way too deep. So that's why this is preferred, but if this is all you have, you can use it, just be careful. Now before we start test fitting these panels, we're going to sand all the interior surfaces of the case. Now, if you have one of these, great. They work great. If not, you can always use a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a block of wood. That works good too. 
and you get a workout at the same time. These are worth it though. Now we can go ahead and bolt this half of all the sliders onto our case pieces, the sides and the center divider. Now if you're using the same sliders we have, you're going to notice that the small hole, these small holes are a little bit too small for this bolt to go through. It's just barely. So just all you have to do is take the same drill bit that you use to drill these holes and just ream these out a little bit. Here on the center divider, we're going to have one of these sliders on either side. So that's where we use these bolts with the round head on it. Starting at the front, which is this side. We'll put a bolt through. Same bolt goes through this slider and put a nut on it. There we go. Then we'll put one here at the back. Now when you're bolting these sliders on the center divider, you may or may not encounter this bolt being just a tad bit too long to where it, the slider kind of hits it. You hear that? That's easily fixed. All you have to do is either, you can either take a Dremel tool with a, a grinding wheel on it. You can get a grinding wheel for your drill. Uh, you can use a hacksaw, take it out hacksaw and cut it off a little bit or you can just use a simple file. You don't have to take off much. It's only maybe a sixteenth of an inch if that. Before cutting, grinding, or filing a bolt, first put a nut on it. Afterwards, taking the nut off will clean off the threads. Okay, those are on. Now onto the sides. The same thing, put one in at each end and remember the cone shaped head goes down into that recess that we made. And let's see, this is the front. Okay, we've got all the sliders on the case sides anyways. And you see on the outside of these uh, side panels that those bolt heads are nice and flush with the surface. That's what we wanted. And everything runs really nice and smooth. Now the real fun begins. We're going to begin by screwing the sides to the top. Now to make sure that the screws go where we want them to, provide the best holding power, and sink that head down below the surface, we're using one of these. This is an all-in-one uh, pilot hole maker, countersinker, everything. Uh, it's made specifically for a number six screw. It has a pilot drill and a way to make that countersink on the surface. Now you don't have to buy something like this, although it is handy to have. Uh, you can easily though just take a uh, 3 seconds drill bit to drill that pilot hole and then like a, I think it's a, like a 9 30 seconds drill bit to do that countersink on the surface. To make certain that those screws go straight down through the top and down into the very center of the side panels, we're going to measure over half the thickness of the side panel, which is a quarter of an inch, over from the edge. There, and down here. Make a line. And that is where we drill, right through there, right on that line. We're going to be putting in a total of five screws along this line. We're going to start two inches from the edge. We don't want those screws too close to the edge, otherwise they may splinter or split the side panels. Then, uh, these are basically about five and a half inches apart then. Same goes for attaching the back. It also is a half inch thick, so we're going to measure over that quarter of an inch and make a line for those screws. 
Same thing as the sides, come in two inches from the edge. And uh, we're gonna be putting five total in the back of this too. Now if you're making this uh, set of drawers a little bit larger, like for the forerunner or for the back of a truck or whatever, uh, just put more screws in the wider you get and the deeper you get. Now while we're at it, we might as well mark those holes for that center divider also. So this is 33 inches wide, so that'd be 16 and a half inches will be the center. And that is where we'll be drilling those holes. Because this is the be very beginning of putting it together, it's really not real handy to put these sides on like that and drill the holes for those screws like this, because it's just not handy at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill the holes first through the top, and then with a little help, hopefully, I'll be able to then drill down into this and get that nice and straight and centered. Turns out Mary is not available to come out here right now to help. So what I'm gonna do is take a bunch of scrap wood and prop up one side, and then we'll just be able to do it like this. We'll put a couple of screws in. I wanna make sure that this side is nice and square to the top. That's pretty good. Flush in the front, nice and straight along the sides. Now we can finish, where'd my drill go? There it is. We can finish that pilot hole down into the sides. And keep an eye on your drill, make sure it's straight up and down. The screws are just number six by inch and a half long. Put a little soap on the threads first. This will allow the screws to go in much easier. And don't over tighten it. In fact, adjust your, if you have an adjustment on your drill, adjust it down a little bit so it, it doesn't get sunk way down in there. And same thing for the other side. Make it nice and square. And drill hole. <laughs> Next, we can put the back in. Now we'll screw through the side into the back. One screw an inch down from the top, one screw an inch up from the bottom, one dead center. Now we can go ahead and put in that center divider. But before we do, we need to mark its location. We first found the very center in between here, and that's 16 inches, and that's this line right here. We also did that in the back, drew a line, that's dead center. Now, since our center divider is a half inch thick, we're gonna measure over on one side of that center line a quarter of an inch. We'll draw a line connecting the two, and that is gonna be what we line up the one side of our divider with. And I'll make an X. This is where that center divider needs to go, so we don't accidentally put it on the wrong side of this line. Drill a pilot hole. And then sink a screw in. And sink in the rest of the screws. Now just a reminder, no glue yet. This is only a trial fit. Make sure everything is measured correctly. 
we plan on eventually putting a refrigerator on top of here with a pull out. So when you pull that fridge out, it's gonna put all the weight over here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna try to lift this top away from the back. Now remember, the back is an attachment point to the floor of our vehicle. So that's not going anywhere. To make absolutely certain that this joint doesn't pull apart, we're gonna be putting in these steel L brackets in this corner in the inside of course and that will make sure that this never pulls apart to put those brackets on we're going to use a much larger version of the same kind of bolts that we use to bolt on the sliders on the sides and that's these right here Then we make those same kind of countersinks on the exterior of the case. One inch bolts through the top. And three quarter inch long through the back. So now we can put the bottom up. And we'll be sinking screws through the sides and through the back. And just like the rest of the case, uh, since we're going into half inch thick material, we're gonna make that line from the edge a quarter of an inch, and uh, that'll be where we drill. All right, the case is all screwed together. Everything is looking really nice and square. Let's start on the drawers. When sizing the drawers, you have to take into account the width of those sliders, the whole assembly, and they are a half an inch each. So the overall width of the drawer has to be one inch less than the opening. Now we're also allowing for a quarter of an inch right here between the top of the drawer side and the underneath of the top. That'll clear those bolts and those brackets that we put back here. We're also leaving about the same amount of space at the bottom. Now the drawers go together just like we did the case where we drill the pilot holes, sink the screws in. Um, there is one difference however. The bottom of our drawers is three quarter inch stock. So when we make that line for drilling the pilot holes, that's three-eighths of an inch now instead of the quarter. It's still a quarter where the sides meet the back. That's still a quarter inch from the edge. And we're not going to do anything with the drawer front yet, and you'll see why later. Now to mark out the position of those screws, the side and the bottom are going to be flush with the front. So we're going to come back one inch from the front. That'll be one, and then we'll go every three inches. A screw every three inches for the back going into the bottom too. Now that the drawers are mostly put together, we can put them in and mock up exactly where that drawer front needs to be, and we can mark exactly where the slider needs to be on the side of the drawers. Now when we measured out our drawers, we left them a half an inch shorter than the side of the case, the inside of the case. That way they won't bottom out on those nuts for those L brackets we put in earlier. So to bring that out to be nice and flush with the front, we're just taking a piece of half inch plywood and standing it on edge in the back and this happens to be a quarter of an inch thick. Remember that space we left at the bottom? The quarter of an inch? So we're gonna lay this down in the back and that will keep the drawer back up. Put the drawer in. And that's nice and flush. And in the front, again, quarter of an inch. And that's gonna give our spacing at the bottom. Now we can mark the center line of the drawer sides and the drawer bottom. We'll transfer that to the case top and sides. That way we'll know exactly where we need to drill the holes for the screws 
through the front and go into the sides and the bottoms. So we made our drawer fronts a quarter of an inch shorter than the case itself. That way when you pull the drawer out, it's not going to rub on whatever sill plate you have there at the back door. So we need to bring that up. To do that, we just made some little wedges out of some plywood and put them underneath both sides here and use them to bring it up and to center it on the center divider. Bring it up flush with the top. Now to leave a little bit of a gap in between the two drawer fronts, we're going to leave, you'll see on this half inch plywood there's three plies. Well, we're going to leave this dark one showing and that'll give us just enough room so those drawer fronts don't, there's no chance of them ever hitting. Now we can take those marks that we made on our cabinet, we can transfer those onto the drawer front and that's going to be the center line where we need to drill those holes. Now we need to mark out position of some screws. So starting at the top of the case, come down, we're going to come down two inches. That'll give, give us a screw right about there in the drawer side. We don't want it too close to the edge, remember, because we don't want to split it. So two inches down, then coming up from the bottom, we'll go another two inches. Then at the bottom, we'll go another two inches over. Then put a screw, what, about every two inches. So we have that drawer front back in place. Uh, we lined up those marks on both the case and the drawer. So it goes right back where we had it. We have these wedges underneath to help put it right where it needs to be. Then we're going to drill a couple of pilot holes. And we're going to do the same on this side. And there we go. Now we can start putting the rest of the screws in. But first I want to make sure. Yep, they went right in the middle of those sides. Awesome. On the fronts, I'm drilling a little deeper with that, with that countersink. I want the heads of these screws to be back in a little bit more because we're going to come back later and fill those with some wood putty. Now we can attach this side of the slider onto the size of our uh, drawers. Here's that mark that we made earlier when the drawer was still in place right there. So what we're going to do is measure up to that and that is three and a quarter and we'll make a mark on this side up three and a quarter connect the dots and that is going to be the center line of the slider on the drawers and again we're going to mark back from the drawer front a half an inch. Then we can take this half of the slider, put it up to that half inch mark in the front. Oops. Center that line in all these holes and mark for some bolts. Again, two in the front, two in the back, and two in the center. And we'll drill them. To attach the sliders to the drawer sides, those same 1024s by 5 8 with the countersink head. Now comes the time when we see if everything we did was done right. And not only will it fit, but will it actually slide. And push it in. Wow. <laughs> it works. All right. Onto this one. 
That looks great. So now it's time for the latches. Now the latches we're using, they need a hole that measures two and three quarter across and three and three quarter up and down. And we're gonna start the cut on our particular drawers an inch and a quarter from this top edge. So we're gonna first find the direct center of the drawer face. That's our center. And what do we say down? Inch and a quarter down. Draw a line across, and that'll be the top of our latch. And then, what do we say, three and three quarter. So that's a total of five inches down from the top. Now we need to cut the hole out. Unfortunately, we can't just take a saw and start sawing down from the top or the sides or anything like that. This has to be an inside cut all around. First, we need to drill a hole about, eh, about that big or so. Anywhere inside of uh, the cutout. Now there are a few different types of saws you can use to do this with. Here's a few of them. This is a coping saw. Whoops. There goes the other one. This is a coping saw. This blade comes off and then you simply put the blade through and reattach it to the saw. And you can angle this blade so you can go sideways and down. You can just saw it like this. This works really well. Another option, this is actually a drywall saw. And if you drill a big enough hole, I'd go with a half inch hole to get this in a little bit further. But you can, you can saw it like that. Fortunately, in our shop, we have a jigsaw. Now most of these latches come with mounting holes already drilled in them. For some reason, these did not. But that's no big deal. We have a 3 16th drill bit, and we're just gonna drill our own. Now we can mark the holes for those bolts onto our drawer fronts. Now here we're using the same bolts that we used to bolt the sliders on to the center divider. They're those 10 24s, three quarter inch long with that round head and nuts on the back side. Now comes the time to mount the hardware that's gonna hold this down tight to the floor. This is our turnbuckle, like you saw earlier. And this is a U-shaped bracket. Got nuts on the outside, and nuts, washers, and this backing plate on the inside. I've got the holes marked. They're about an inch and a quarter down from the top, uh, a couple inches in from the the very end. We're going to drill those holes, quarter inch drill bit. Same exact thing on the back side of the case. Now that we've got it all put together, everything fits and works perfectly, uh, we get to take it all back apart and then put some glue on it, put it back together for good. Before I take it apart, I'm gonna mark every single panel on this thing, the case and the drawers, uh, exactly where they go, the, their uh, position, their top, bottom, front, back, inside, outside, everything. That way we are for sure gonna put it back together the same way it came apart. I'm also marking where this latch touches the case. I'm also going to make some lines at every corner in the interior, and you'll see why later. Something else that we have to do to the case before we can put anything back together is we need to put something on the underside of the top to receive this latch. That is this thing right here. This is a strike plate and we're gonna be putting it up underneath here. We have the prototype 
turned upside down, what you're looking at here is the underside of the top and there's that strike plate. Now we have to do two things. One is we need to cut this recess into the top to receive that latch so it catches. And another thing is we have to cut, do a little modifying to this strike plate. We have to cut off this leading edge because otherwise it's going to stick way out and, and the door will never shut. So we'll take that off with the hacksaw. We covered the strike plate with blue tape because you can see marks a lot better and you can actually mark with a pencil. Uh, first thing we did is we made a line connecting this shoulder and that shoulder. That's this line right here. Then we measured an eighth of an inch out to here and this dotted line is where we're going to make the cut. Now with the strike plate off, you can get a good look at the recess that we have to make. The front edge of the hole is a quarter inch from the very front edge of the top. And then we mark out this, that part right there. So we're going to take out all of this. This is a quarter of an inch back from the front. And all this comes out down to about uh, 5 sixteenths deep. Now to cut the hole, I'm just using a standard, regular old half inch wood chisel. Got the hole all chiseled out. Now we're going to put the strike plate on. Uh, we're going to drill a couple of pilot holes. Keep that edge right up at the front. Number eight, half inch long wood screws. Now before we start putting this all back together, it would be really difficult to get a good finish on the interior of the case when it's after it's all put together. So we're going to do it now. However, we cannot get any of the finish on any of the glue joints. Now remember those lines that we made before we took everything apart at all the corners? That's what all these lines are. This is where the glue joints are going to be. So to protect them from the spray on finish we're going to use glue masking tape. We're just going to tape them off. All right, we've got all of the joints that it's ever going to see glue all well protected with the tape. Uh, for a finish, we're using a water-based polyurethane spray, just because it's easy with a spray. Um, and water-based because we're inside and I don't want a lot of uh, nasty odors and it dries really fast. We put three layers of that polyurethane on and it's not necessarily for looks because this is going to be the inside of the case after all. Nobody's going to see it. It's just going to act more like a moisture barrier. It is a whole lot easier to bolt these sliders on now than after it's all put together. To be sure the nuts don't come loose with all the bouncing around, put a little drop of Loctite on the threads. Before I start gluing anything up, I want to make sure that I have everything laid out and everything I need right at hand. Uh, I've got the glue, I've got something to wipe up drips, got the screw gun, got all my screws. Um, I've got these panels laid out exactly where they're supposed to go, left side, right side, uh, inside. This is the top. This is actually the top of the top. And we're going to do it the same way we did before, where we're going to use these blocks. Hold up to one side, and then we'll bring this up like that. First, we need to get some glue on here. It's easy to put too much glue on, resulting in a lot of mess and clean up later. Put down a small bead, and then go behind with a brush or a scrap of wood and spread it out evenly. This first first screw into all the panels is the most critical. Oops, if I can hold it up. You need to make sure that it gets down 
into the same hole that it was in before. Yep. put back together everything fits just like it did before even tried out the latches and the and the catches everything works flawlessly but let's face it these holes in the front are hideous now remember when we put it together we sunk these screws in a little bit further than the rest of them we're gonna fill it in with a wood filler now this is a uh, plastic wood, DAP plastic wood. I like this because it's uh, easy to work with and it dries really fast, but you can use anything. Um, you can get some in a tube and just push it in there really good so it makes a lot of good contact. And uh, don't be afraid to have it a little bit of a mound out because this is gonna shrink a little bit. It's really easy to sand, so uh, it's no big deal having a little too much in there right now. This wood filler is also really good for covering up any mistakes you might have made. We're gonna sand down the exterior of the case and the drawers with some 120 grit paper. Then we're gonna spray down the interior of our drawers with that same clear polyurethane. That clear finish is nice and dry. Now we're taping it off in preparation for the exterior paint. And I just learned that kitchen trash bags work awesome for covering up these drawers. The drawer cavities in our case are all taped off and well protected. Now we're gonna spray on the exterior finish. Now what we've been using for years and we really like it is just this simple spray on bed liner stuff. It uh, goes on nice and thick, it's really strong, and it has a textured finish. Now don't rush this, just spray on nice thin coats. Uh, we'll be putting on like three or four thin coats of this. Now we just have to figure out what we're gonna fill these with. The way we off-road, lots and lots of tools and spare parts. If this is your first time watching one of our videos and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell if you wanna be notified.